Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using variables in Java. Now, variables are basically little containers where we can store specific values or pieces of data in our Java programs. So whenever you're writing a program, especially in Java, you're going to be working with a lot of data. You know, these could be pieces of information like numbers or text. And a lot of times it's going to be useful to store that data in containers. And there's a special type of container that we can use in Java, which is called a variable. So in this tutorial, I'm just going to, going to walk you guys through what variables are, how to use them and why they're useful in our programs. So over here, I have this little program and you can see it's right here. And I've basically written out a little story and I want to read this story to you guys. It's a really cool story. It basically says there once was a man named George. He was 70 years old. He really liked the name George, but didn't like being 70. Most of his friends were also 70, and one of them was also named George. So this is a very simple story, but I'm gonna show you how we can use variables to make this story a lot better. So over here, we have our code to write out this story, and I'm basically just using these system.out.print lines, and I have uh, about five of them here. And inside of each one, I'm writing a line of the story. So you can see here's the first line, here's the second line. And this is a great way to do this, right? I'm able to write out the story. It shows up on our console. Here's the thing though. Let's say that I'm looking at this story and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I think I could make this story a little bit better. I want to appeal to a broader audience. Why don't we make the character a little bit younger, right? So instead of George being 70, let's say I wanted to make George be 40. Well, all you have to do to do that is just go through and change the age. So I'll come in here instead of saying 70, we'll replace it with 40. And then I got to find the next place. Okay. So over here it says 70 again. So we'll replace this with 40 and over here again, it says 70. So let's put 40 and that looks pretty good. Now George is a little bit younger, but let's say that I don't like the name George. So I want to change the name. Maybe we'll make this character named Tom. Okay, so now I just need to go change the name. So I'll go here. Okay, here's one. I'll change that to Tom. Here it is again. We'll change it to Tom. And ah, here we go. Last one. Change this to Tom. So now I've successfully updated my program and we made the character a little bit younger and we changed their name. So now when I print this out, you'll see we have our new and improved story over here on the console. Here's the problem though. When I wanted to go through and change the character's age and the character's name, I had to physically search through each line on here, find where either the name was or the age was and change it manually. And that's kind of a drag, right? I mean, this is a pretty short story, but imagine I had like this long, huge story that mentioned the character's name like hundreds of times and mentioned their age hundreds of times. If I wanted to change it, it'd be a real pain in the butt. We can actually use something in Java to make this a little bit easier. And that's called a variable. So we can take this age value and we can take this name value and we can store it inside of a container, which is called a variable. And then instead of having to type out the age and the name inside of our story, we can just access the variable or the container that we store that value in and we can just use that throughout our story. Then if I wanted to change the name or the age, I would just have to change the value in one spot where we defined our container and it's going to make this a lot easier. So let me show you guys how to do that. I'm going to come down and right above this print line, I'm just going to make uh, what's called a variable. And the first thing we want to do is make a variable for the guy's name. So the character in our story, I want to create a container where we can store their name. And generally in Java, if you want to store a piece of text, so this person's name is going to be like text, right? We want to create a variable called a string and a string is just a type of variable and it stores textual information. So I can say string. And now what I want to do is I want to type out the name of the variable that I want to create. So we can actually give this a descriptive name. So I'm going to call this character name. And now I'm going to set this equal to a particular value. So why don't we set this equal to the character's name, which is Tom. And now after every line of Java code, I always want to put a semicolon. So what's happening here is I'm defining the type of data that I want to store inside of my variable. In our case, it's going to be a string, which again is just like a piece of text like this. 
I'm giving this variable a name, so I'm calling it character name, and then I'm giving it a value, so I'm saying equals Tom. So now the character name variable has a value of Tom. What I could also do is create another variable for his age. We could store his age inside of a string, but there's actually a special data type in Java which we can use to store numbers, and it's called an integer. So an integer is just like a counting number, so it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, etc. It's any of like the whole numbers. So if I want to create an integer, I can say int, and again, I want to give this a descriptive name. So I can say character age, because this is going to represent the character's age. Now I can say equals, and I can put the value. So if I'm defining a number, like an integer in Java, I don't have to put quotation marks around it. I can just type out the number like that. So now over here, we're saying the type of data that we want to store inside of our variable, which is an integer, and then we're giving that variable a name and we're giving it a value, which is going to be 40. Now what I can do is I can come down to my story and I can actually access these variable names instead of just typing out the values. So over here, for example, we have this character's name, Tom. What I can do is I can replace this with that variable. And the way that we can do that is by inserting the variable into here. And if I'm doing that inside of a string right here, all I have to do is use a plus sign and we can add in that variable name. So I'm going to get rid of this quotation mark. And over here, I'm just going to use a quotation mark. So you'll see here, my text editor has colored these differently. So this is colored green. And then when I end the quotation mark here, we're no longer like typing out actual text. I can do a plus sign. And now what this is going to say is there once was a man named a space, and then it's going to say the actual character's name. So over here, we can just type in the name of the variable that we created. So I can say character name. And so this is actually going to go up here and it's going to get the value out of this character name variable. So let's test this out. I'm going to save my file and I'm going to run this program. And now let's look over here on our console. You'll see we have there once was a man named Tom. So I didn't actually type out Tom over here in my print line statement. All I did was access the character name variable. And when Java saw this, what it did is it went up to the character name variable, it grabbed the value and it inserted it in here into the text. And so that's basically how we can insert the character's name without actually having to type it out. So I could basically just copy this and I could use this every time we want to access the character's name. So I'm just going to copy this and we'll find the next place where it says Tom. So down here, we're also accessing the character's name. So I'm just going to get rid of this and I'm basically going to put two quotation marks here, two plus signs. And inside of here, we'll just type out character name. So let me also just explain what's happening here. We're defining a literal like line of text. So it's just the name. And then when I end this quotation mark, so you can see here we have a starting quotation marks and an ending quotation marks. Once I end off that quotation marks, I can use this plus sign and I can add in a variable. So now this is just going to be a variable. It's not going to be like text inside of quotation marks. And then I can use this other plus sign and I can use quotation marks again. So that's kind of how you can insert a variable into like a line of text like we have here. So there's one instance with the character name. And I think we have one more place. Yeah, so down here, we're also accessing the character's name. So now when I save my file and I go and run my program over here, everything looks the same. So it's still saying there once was a man named Tom. He really liked the name Tom, but didn't like being 40. Most of his friends were also 40, and one of them was also named Tom. So we're able to access that same value without actually having to physically write it out in each one of those lines. And what's cool about using variables is if I wanted to change the character's name, so let's say I wanted to change it to Dave, all I have to do is change it up here. In other words, I can just change what we're putting up here and now it's automatically going to get updated throughout our entire story. So now instead of using the name Tom, it's going to use the name Dave in all of these locations. And that's really why these variables are awesome is because you can store a value in one spot. You can define the value in one spot and then you can access it in 
any number of spots just by accessing that name. And if you want to update it, you only have to change it in one spot. So I could also do the same thing for the character's age. So over here I have character name. We could do the same thing for character age and we could also like control that. So I'm going to do that really quick. So I went through and I added in this character age variable wherever we were accessing the character's age. And this is just going to be 40. So you see that it's still going to work over here. We're still able to access the character's age. And if I wanted to change it, so let's change it to like 20. It's going to automatically update throughout our entire story. So now I can change the character's name and the character's age super easily and it'll automatically update in my story. Now there's actually another thing we can do. We can assign different values to these variables at different points in our program. So if I came down here and I'll just make a new line after this, uh, these first two system.out.print lines, I could actually change the value of these two variables. And so I could say character name is equal to Mike and I can say character age is equal to 80. And so what you'll see is on these first two lines of the story, the character's name is going to be Dave and the character's age is going to be 20. But after I give these variables different values down here for the rest of the story, their age and their name is going to change. So let's see how this works. I'm going to run the program and let's check out our story. It says there once was a man named Dave. He was 20 years old. He really liked the name Mike, but didn't like being 80. So from this point in the story down to this point in the story, the character's name has changed and the character's age has changed. So in certain times in your program, you're going to want to update those individual variables and you can do it just like we did it over here, just by saying the variable name an equal sign and giving it a new value. So that's the basics of using variables. And in the next video, I'm going to talk to you about what types of variables we can create. So up here, we created a string, which is just characters. And we also created an integer, but there's a bunch of other types of data that we can also create. So I want to show you guys um, all the different types of data that you can store inside of your programs. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve. So if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.